as a homeschooling parent, you do have an advantage where you can just narrow, laser in on what your kids are up to. Don't feel pressured that, oh, gee, they should really be ahead here. Don't feel under that pressure at all that they should be at a certain stage. It'll, I'd be confident that it'll all work out in the long run. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I have such an exciting guest on this week, and this is gonna be a fun conversation because you guys have heard me talk for years about CTC Math. And we are talking to the founder um, of CTC Math. His name is Pat Murray, and we're gonna have a fun conversation. We're not gonna just talk about math this week. We're gonna talk about family and about how his perspective has changed as a dad. He's got 10 kids. And so I know a lot of you homeschool families have lots of kids as well. And so we're gonna talk about all of these things and just have a great time getting to know Pat. So thank you, Pat, for being with us today. Before we get started, though, I want to say thank you to our pre-roll sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a really good, solid, Christian, biblical uh, worldview curriculum for your kids for any subject, history, science, language arts, whatever, um, look at BJU Press Homeschool. They have everything for every grade every subject, and they have lots of different ways to teach your kids and to help them engage in what it is that they're learning. So check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. And you can also call them and talk to one of their consultants if you're just not sure what is best for your family. Um, call them up and they'll walk you through the whole process, bjupresshomeschool.com. As we're talking about our sponsors, um, we are so grateful for BJU Press Homeschool and also for CTC Math. They have sponsored this podcast for years. I don't even know how many years. I think we're going on three and a half years or so, somewhere around there. And without them, we would not be able to do what it is that we're doing. And so we are so grateful for all of our sponsors. And we're grateful for you, our listeners, those of you who have been so encouraging to us, who have given financially to the Schoolhouse Rock Ministry. Um, we know that that's a sacrifice. We know that that's not something that comes easily, especially for homeschool families. Um, we know that we are all on tight budgets. And so for those of you who continue to give to the ministry, thank you so very much. It means more to us than you can possibly imagine. Um, so if you're looking for another way to support us, you can support the ministry by praying for us. And you can also support the ministry by sharing this podcast with your friends and family members. Um, so thank you for that. Well, uh, Pat, welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to have you with me this week. Would you introduce yourself to our audience? Thanks, Yvette. I'm, I'm really uh, pleased that I've got an invite to, to chat with your audience. So uh, as a bit of an intro, I guess uh, I, I'm a father of, as you mentioned, 10. I have five boys and five girls. And as of uh, just a few months ago, we have a, had our 10th grandchild as well. So uh. Uh, so we've got a, a very um, a lovely and expanding family. So... Uh, yeah, in terms of where I, I guess I started, we were, um, I, I, I'll start with when, when I got married, actually, with my sure. lovely wife, Marie. So we uh, we met at school, so we got married uh, not long after school, and uh, I was still um, I was still studying for my degree in, in maths teaching, in math teaching. So, uh, and then, um, and we, we had our first child pretty, pretty quickly, and then uh, a steady um, <laughs> flow of children every, every couple of years or so. Uh, five boys and and five girls. So, in terms of um, growing growing up or, or growing through that first part of, of teaching and having having children, I did a lot of uh, tutoring as well because uh, we just made sure we had to make ends meet, of course. Sure. So, and, um, and 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 what I found when I was tutoring kids, I, I sort of found that uh, it was interesting to see the different types of. Um, I suppose the quality of teaching that they were receiving, you know, you could see some were really taught well and they just needed some extra help. For, but you could also see that some were taught, let's say, not so well. So, um, and and I did find ha having that, you know, that classroom experience, but also then on tutoring the one-on-one -on -one experience, I learned a lot in to see how I could make math much easier for someone to learn. And, and you know, because when I went to um, college, you know, when I was taught, you know, because uh, I often ask, oh, how, do you, how should I teach this? You know, you know, there's three or four different ways. And sure. and often the, the lecturer will say, just, just teach it however you like, you know, just, just you know, just pick one way and choose it because they're all the same. And and I found out that that was exactly not true. Okay, right. they're, not, they're not all the same. So 
I, I guess I had my radar up all, always to see what is the best way of teaching kids and and having that one on one experience. You got to, you teach it one way, you can see oh, they're not really getting it. Let's 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 switch tack and treat it this way. And all of a sudden, the lights you know the the lights are on, and okay, now I get it. So, and I, I guess I had a, a good way of just remembering all of those ways and sort of. Um, uh, I guess that was one of my unique abilities to be able to just to remember all the good ways of teaching and then sort of blend it all together in my in my teaching. So that's a bit of a start. Um, and then yeah. we moved into into you know, I moved out of the classroom and and created uh, what is now CTC Math. And um, we've got a great team in Australia here. And uh, but we're really happy that we're able to reach you know a lot of people in the US, a lot of, a lot of your audience. Yes. It's uh, we we get quite excited, you know. We 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 love you know, being able to to help homeschoolers in particular. Yeah, well, you do a great job of it. Our listeners know if they have listened to us for any length of time that I am not a math person, and and I'm actually curious to know what your opinion is on this because some people will say, "Oh, there's no such thing as a math person or a, not a math person. It's just in how it's taught." And I'm like, "No, no." I am not a math person. Some people really have the ability to understand math and to just grasp the concepts. I am one of those people who I just, it does not come easily to me. My best friend, Crystal, she loves math. She does it for fun. Like she will literally do math for fun. And I'm like, how in the world that, I mean, that just sounds like the most torturous thing in the whole world to me. And so CTC has been a lifesaver for our family because you teach math to my kids. And so for, a, a, you know, as a homeschool mom, one of the things that um, I had the most fear of going into homeschooling was that I would come to subjects that I didn't know how to teach my kids. You know, history, some people are history buffs, some are not, but anybody can read history. So anybody can just read that. Science is maybe a little bit more complicated. Language arts, you can pretty well teach that with any curriculum, but math, there's something about it that takes a certain type of brain to be able to grasp those concepts. So do you, what are your thoughts behind that? Like, are there people who are not math people or is that, you know, <laughs> am I crazy to think, oh no, I'm not a math person. Yeah, yeah. Look, it actually does stem back to probably very early days. So if you're taught well in, in a way where you're set up to succeed, mm-hmm. you'll probably be be reasonably good at math or, or, or not, or not have any anxiety about it at least. Sure. Okay. But I do find that the earlier that the kids are taught, you know, well and set yeah. up for success that that the um uh that that they actually can enjoy math. You know, they might like stuff, you know, other stuff a lot better, which is sure. fine. But they as long as you think you can have a level of success success, then I think that's that's really entwined with the enjoyment of it. I guess it's like anything. If you if you're trying to do something but you're failing and failing all the time, that's that's not enjoyable, right? Right. So, uh, and I know that I, I know that some of my colleagues and and, and a lot of teachers uh, in math, because they love their subject so much, they love their subject so much, they don't actually quite grasp that well, maybe this kid's not that that interested. They don't understand that there's Maybe right. a lot of people just aren't that interested. So it's a bit like me, like with history. I like I love history now, but when I was growing mm-hmm. up, I hated it. It was just so boring, you know. I had no right. interest in it. So no matter, I I I think probably I just just wasn't interested. But as sure. an adult, I am very interested. So that's I think sometimes teachers get stuck in they think you know what they're showing is actually very interesting because it is. It's interesting to them. Sure. But it's not necessarily interesting. To the to the kid they're showing. So I've always thought, look, you know, to make math fun, uh, I don't really get into all oh, the whole lot of games, all this stuff. I've always found that kids enjoy math once they start having a level of success and they've right. and they're set up for success. That's where I see they their enjoyment. Now to answer directly your question about are they non math people and are they math people? Probably, probably yeah. there are some people that do struggle. So there's yeah. there's no doubt no doubt about it. But I think. I, I don't think it's the vast majority. I think I think um, uh, the way a lot of the schooling is set up, it's not set up for for kids to succeed. Mm. So by the time they hit high school at age, then they probably already decided they've you know that they're not that good at math. Whereas sure. you know sure. if they had got shown you know beforehand, yeah, uh, that that the, yeah it could be a different story. Sure. And, and, you know, I, I really actually agree with you on that because now that I, as I'm thinking through it, it's one of the beauties of homeschooling our kids is that we can go at their pace 
And when I think back to my days of learning math, I remember very specifically eighth grade. I struggled so much in math in eighth grade. And that was the year that I just was like, I hate math. And ever since then, and, and the thing was that I was in a classroom. And so my teacher who, I, she was wonderful. I loved her, but she couldn't slow down for me. She had to go at the pace that she had to go to accomplish what she needed to accomplish by the end of the year. And so I basically felt like I got left in the dust. And from eighth grade on, I was like, I hate math. This is the hardest thing ever. I don't understand it. And because it continues to build on itself, I became lost and I stayed lost. And it was very, very frustrating for me. So as an adult now, I'm just like, no, <laughs> don't talk about math. But anything yeah. before eighth grade, I didn't. I don't remember hating math. It was just at that point, I just couldn't do it. And so with homeschooling, and I know with CTC math, you can go at the pace that your child is going. If they're really good at it and they pick it up quickly, you can just move ahead quickly. If they're struggling, you slow down, rewatch the lessons and go at the pace that your child is most comfortable going, which I think is such a wonderful benefit to home educating our kids. Yeah, well, I, I, it's it's good that you actually got to eighth grade before you read into a roadblock theory, but because I know you at home listening to this, you probably, if you do struggle with math or, or teaching math, it's probably, you might share the experience that Yvette had where you remember a particular stage where you just didn't start, mm -hmm. you know, but, but up till then it was probably okay. Sure. So I, I think, I mean, one of the, one of the sad statistics is about, uh, and this is worldwide, not just in Australia or all the, all the states, but 38% of primary school teachers or elementary school teachers aren't that good at math themselves. So they have some sort of math anxiety. Wow. And, and it is it is frightening because, you know, they will be might be very good at um, English or language or spelling or, or right. arts or crafts or so on. But math that they struggle with and they mm. just... You know, they probably haven't themselves found support to help them. Yeah. So, you know, it sort of sets up the kids for um, to have struggles right from that, sure. that point. So, and I guess really, it's really important if you can, you know, if, you, if the kids can learn at their pace, uh -huh. because they're all different, like I mean, even in primary, you know, I sort of go back to primary a bit because I'm sure. very interesting to see that is a lot of where the problems start and, and, they, and, and they become ingrained. Uh, you know, a typical grade three class, for example, mm -hmm. would have kids who in that one class could be at year at grade five level or, or grade two level. So there's a right. three, often at that, there's a three year gap and a teacher has to sort of pitch their teaching. You know, it's sick. It's honestly, well, that's a, that's a problem. And it's not an easy one to, to solve in sure. a regular classroom. So as a homeschooling parent, you do have an advantage where you can just narrow, laser in on what your kids are up to and yeah. and and don't feel pressured that oh gee they should really be ahead here. Yeah. That's okay. You know, get plenty of a homeschooling life or, or schooling life in particular is a long time. It's a long process. Sure. So I think uh, that if if you ever feeling that okay look I can see my kids should be a little bit ahead or because other kids are well that's the other kids are going to be ahead or behind. Sure. Sure. So I I would really stress don't feel under pressure. As, yeah. a, as a homeschooling parent teaching your kids, don't feel under that pressure at all that they should be at a certain stage. It'll, I'd be confident that it'll all work out in the long run. Yes, it will. And I have a good story about that when we come back from the break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back with Pat Murray. Um, it's really interesting. I had a friend years ago and her daughter, when she was in kindergarten, she started teaching her math and she really struggled. And so she put the math, the mom, uh, the very wise homeschool mom, she put the math book away. And so in first grade, she brought it back out and taught it to her, tried to teach it to her daughter and her daughter was still struggling with it. And so she, they tried for a little while and she said, okay, it was just way frustrating. She just wasn't ready for it. So she put the math book away. The next year or several months later, she brought it back out. Her daughter still wasn't ready for it. And this went on and on and on until I think it was fourth grade. And in fourth grade, she brought the math book out and uh, like her daughter's brain was just developed enough. She was mature enough and she was ready for it. And so when they jumped into this math, she just got it. And they jumped from basically basic, you know, kindergarten, first grade level math to fourth grade math within the first semester. And it happened that quickly because she was just ready for it. Have you, as as you've studied math and, and taught for so many years, 
Have you seen that happen other times where kids' brains are just not yet developed? They're just not ready for it. And how how would you encourage that mom? Because math is one of those things that you hear, you know, oh, my kid just cries and cries and cries because they're so frustrated over it. And these moms want to just push their kid into it because they want to get through the book and finish that third grade math in third grade. Yeah. So can you maybe bring some um, light to that and some encouragement um, and talk a little bit about how the brain works that way in young children? Yeah. Well, I really love to hear that, hearing that story because that story, if that was told more often, if I'd reach more people, then I think that would relieve a lot of stress that, that, home sure. parents, uh, that homeschool parents feel. Now, I think, yeah, you're right. I mean, some kids just aren't ready at certain times. And rather than sort of hit your head against a brick wall, just, you know, trying to trying to hammer this information in, let them stay at a level that they're a bit more comfortable with for a bit longer. Okay. So, and and it is amazing with math. I have seen that at plenty of times too, where really you know, kids make two or three years progress within right. a 12 month period. Mm-hmm. So that's not unusual. Uh, what is probably more common though, is that, that kid you know, wouldn't have that opportunity to make that progress because they've been trying to, they were, you know, they've been pushed and advanced mm-hmm. to a level that they're not um, comfortable with or capable of. Sure. And then as a result, they sort of eventually think, you know, that, and they keep on getting pushed as well to keep on. Right. So they're, they're, they're just failing all the time. So that's when they say, oh, I'm no, no good at math. I don't like it. Uh, it's mm-hmm. frustrating. And I can understand the tears because, I mean, if you turned up, you know, if you turned up every day to a job and you knew that part of that job yeah, you might be excelling in a whole lot of parts, but part of that job you were going to fail every day in that. Right. That's pretty frustrating. I mean, that's the yes. way I look at it, you know. And that's what sometimes kids do with math. They, they're turning up to part of their school day mm-hmm. and they know that they're going to fail and it's not fun for anybody. So, yeah. But I, yeah, so I really liked what your friend did. She obviously had enough confidence in herself, though, which is great, not to be feel pressured that they've got to push sure. my child up those levels but yeah so yeah so to see yeah two or three years progress in a 12 month period is is not unusual so what do we do with the child who just they're just not getting it and for those who i i mean you guys have heard us talk about ctc math for so long and it, it's an online math program of course are i'm assuming you're the voice right behind the math lessons i, I, I am yeah yeah okay yeah, so I, thought, I recognize the voice unless you have somebody who sounds very similar to you um, but what pat does is he teaches the math lesson online. So you stream it uh, through, you know, your, your device, any kind of computer, and he teaches the math lesson and it's taught so well. I mean, just step-by-step step exactly what it is that he wants the child to learn for that lesson. And then the kids get to practice those lessons on the computer. And so it's so well done, but for the child who maybe they're still just struggling, like they're still just not getting it. Do you suggest that mom just puts it down for a time, or is it better to have the child maybe go back and start over a few lessons before? What have you found to be the most effective way for kids to actually learn? Yeah, we'll certainly go back, as in go back, you know, to a previous year or even, a, you know, a, a, even a couple of years, depending. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we would encourage uh, you to use at home is the diagnostic test, because the diagnostic mm-hmm. test then will pick up some gaps, because let's say they're in grade, th- let's say they're in grade four. And then grade four, they might have some gaps that they really should have covered way back in grade two, right? Right. But that doesn't mean they have to do the whole grade two again. That means that would be frustrating because some of it would be just too easy for your child. So, so what we suggest is sort of look at that diagnostic test and it'll, it'll pick up what you, what you do. Go back a year or go back two years in that part mm-hmm. and then give the kids um, some focus time on that. And I would, what I found probably... Uh, a really good way that, that kids have responded is to say, let's let's say they're in grade four again. Let's just pause the rest of grade four for a minute. Let's just let's see if we can fix up these problem areas first. Mm-hmm. And if you can fix them up first, and then jump, you know, then get back into the grade four as a whole. We found that to be uh, probably the most effective way of addressing that. Uh, in terms of just having a break um, completely, uh, I think rather than have a break completely, I think just go back to a younger to an earlier grade, I think. Yeah. Um, because I, I think you always find a level that the kids can achieve and get some success sure. in. So if they can even, you know, even if they get some success at that younger level, they won't necessarily think, oh, this is too young for me. They'll just get, oh, wow, I'm becoming successful. 
I'm, I'm, I'm building my confidence and, and with confidence, you build your capabilities. And, yeah. and, and that's what I find. I mean, that's, that's what I guess that our big premise is, okay, give them, give the kids something that they can, uh, become confident in. And I'm not talking about self-esteem. I'm not a big sure. self, self-esteem is sort of get a pat on the back, but you haven't achieved anything. I like the <laughs> idea of self-confidence, self-confidence uh-huh. that distinguishes you, you, you're getting a pat on the back because you've built some capabilities and then you become more confident in your capabilities. So yeah. I, I guess um, that's one of the, the things that I, I like to di- have a distinction between self-esteem yeah. and, and self-confidence. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, we're out of time, but we're going to come back on Wednesday and talk more about this. There's so much more to talk about. Who knew that math could actually be an interesting topic to discuss? <laughs> I don't so much <laughs> like doing math, but I like talking about math. It's really fun, especially with someone like Pat, who's passionate about it and who knows how to teach it. So um, thank you so much, Pat, for being with us. If you are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. They have a 12 month, it still shocks me and amazes me every time that I say this, that that your company does this. They have a 12 month, 100% money back guarantee. So if you try it out for 12 months, though I will say I've never, I've yet to meet anyone who's tried it out and it hasn't worked for them. But if for some reason it doesn't work for you, they will refund your money um, up to 12 months and you can try them out for free as well. So if you just wanna test it out with your kids, do that. This is a great time. Any time of the year is a great time to do that. If the math program that you're using is not working for your kids, stop using it and try something else because math is taught differently by different people. And as you can hear Pat's really super cool Australian accent, who doesn't want to, learn math that way. I mean, that's so much more fun. You probably think I have an accent, don't you, Pat? <laughs> oh, you, it's obvious that you do, Yvette. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm the one without one. <laughs> right. I'm sure, I'm sure you thought that. Uh, but we here in America love listening to the Australian accent. And so this is a fun way for kids to be able to learn math as well. Um, so check them out, ctcmath.com. Um, stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next on the podcast. And remember, you can find everything at schoolhouserocked.com, where you can also stream the movie for free, Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution. You can download our homeschool survival kit, um, or you can make a donation to the ministry, schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. If we think of a basketball player, you know, you might have played basketball, you certainly watched some basketball, uh, and you'll see the guys or, or girls, you know, they're dribbling up the court and so on, and they're looking at, you know, the strategy, where am I going to throw this ball? They're not concentrating on the dribbling. If you think of their dribbling, that's subconscious, okay? But when they learned dribbling, way back when they were, you know, five or six year old, that's all they were concentrating on. How do you dribble this ball without losing it or, okay? But they build up those things that becomes eventually, you know, by subconscious, they're dribbling, but their their focus is on strategy. Where are they throwing the ball to a teammate? Well, who's open? Where can they score some points? And it's a bit like, you know, your math facts, your times tables, your multiplication tables, all of that stuff, as your child gets a bit older, you know, as their, their math works gets a bit harder, you don't want them wasting any sort of mental ability thinking about, oh, five times seven, what's five times seven? All of a sudden, they're thinking about that they're wasting, you know, their mental energy on that. We're really, that should just be instant. 